Metropolitan wrote to Sergius, quote, your eminence, forgive me magnanimously, if by the present letter I disturb the peace of your eminence's soul. People inform me. See, it, this is one thing we can learn. When we are writing letters to priests or bishops who are unfortunately opposed to the patristic spirit or innovators, heretics, whatever it might be, we don't need, we, we must not, uh, if they're still in the position that, 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 and the church has not removed them, uh, there's no need to become worldly and angry and disdainful and, and, and rude and disrespectful. Uh, that's not an expression of the Orthodox ethos. Truth does not suffer from being kind and gentle to anyone, including those who are falling away from Christ. People inform me about the difficult circumstances that have formed for the church in connection with exceeding of the limits of the ecclesiastical authority entrusted to you. I'm very sorry. I'm very sorry that you have not taken the trouble to initiate me into your plans for the administration of the church. You know that I have not renounced the locum tenancy, and consequently, I have retained for myself the higher church administration and the general leadership of church life. At the same time, I make bold to declare that your re you, your remit as deputy was only for the management of everyday affairs. You are only to preserve the status quo. I am profoundly convinced that without prior contact with me, you will not make any responsible decision. That's a very polite way to say that you are a disaster. <laughs> you are what you're doing is a disaster. You are you are proud and arrogant, and you are ignoring the the basics of church governance. I have not accorded you any constituent right as long as I retain the locum tenancy and as long as Metropolitan Cyril is alive and as long as Metropolitan Agathangelos was alive. So very clear that he is illegally usurping authority in the Russian church. Therefore, he goes on, I do not consider it necessary in my decree concerning the appointment of candidates for the deputyship to mention the limitation of their duties. I had no doubt that the deputy would not alter the established rights, but would only deputize or represent, so to speak, the central organ through which the local tenants could communicate to his flock. So basically he's saying, you are a, you are a communication point for me. That's all you are. You have no other rights, no decision-making process for anything serious. Uh, decision-making rights for anything serious. But the, he goes on, the system of administration you have introduced not only excludes this, but also excludes the very need for the existence of the locum tenants. Such major step cannot, of course, be approved by the conscience of the church. So you have way overextended your bounds. You are, uh, really should be removed. I mean, this is what, this is the message. Was how can he do that, practically speaking, from exile? He goes on, it is burdensome for me to number all the details of negative evaluations of your administration. He says, I'm, I'm receiving all kinds of letters and apparently he's being informed of details from some sources that of all the bad things that have happened. The resounding protests and cries from believers, from hierarchs, from lay people. The picture of ecclesiastical division that has been painted is shocking. Now, I want to stop here for a second because in our day and age we go back and we look at this and usually superficially there's a number of clerics and a number of people in the church who will of course accuse those who cease commemoration and communion with surges as being divisive and it's the same today with the heresy of ecumenism the pan heresy of ecumenism those who oppose the pan heresy oppose the trampling of, of canons, oppose the trampling of the holy patristic tradition, those who speak out and write and teach against that, they are accused of division, of division being divisive, being schismatic. This is classic uh, stance of those in error and in delusion. They call those seeking to maintain the patristic tradition as provokers of schism. But we don't see that here, do we, from Metropolitan uh, Peter to Metropolitan Sergius. He is saying that your actions have created the division. And even if you are the deputy, 
Locum tenens, you are the source of division. And it is shocking the degree, uh, the picture that's been painted for me of the ecclesiastical division divide, uh, that, has, that you've brought about. So, so we talked about the title of this talk tonight, the consequences of this 27 declaration. Certainly, first and foremost, is the divisiveness, the division that Sergius brought about with his usurping of power, his papalism, and this is always the fruit of papalism. Go back to the middle to the 16th century, and you'll see the fruit of papalism in the West. Well, here we have papalism rearing its head, and again we have it in our days with papalism going on in the local churches and in, in and especially in the uh, first of all the churches in the Orthodox Church, the Ecumenical Patriarchy. So this is absolutely instructive for us. Let's listen carefully. Uh, my duty and conscience, he goes on. Do not allow me to remain indifferent to such a sorrowful phenomenon. They urge me to address your eminence with a most insistent demand that you correct the mistake you have made, which was placed the church in a humiliating position, which has caused quarrels and divisions. You have caused quarrels and divisions with your innovation and your stance and your papalism, caused quarrels and division in her and a blinding of the reputation of her leaders. So you have caused the church to be defamed among the heathen. You've caused worthy servants of God to be called schiz, uh, uh, schismatics uh, and, and, re, and rebellious and uh, anti-authoritarians uh, and all the rest. Right? In the same way, I ask you to suspend the other measures which you have increased, which have increased your prerogatives. So in the, in the other things I'm talking about, that you've usurped, and this especially, you must cease uh, what you're doing. This is a clear message from his boss, right? This is his boss. This is the one he should have been listening to. He was not. 